Hello, everybody, welcome to a special video. This is actually the very first YouTube video I'm officially recording. So it has come to my attention recently that uh, a lot of people who want to play Phasmophobia have zero idea on the game. Now, this game, uh, despite seeming very easy, is actually a pretty difficult game to learn. There's a lot of tactical tactical there is a lot of um very in-depth stuff that they don't show you or they don't teach you uh so this video will be some sort of like guide fundamental guide for new players uh especially fellow streamers that i know of who would love to play this game but don't want to have a bad time at it so Today, I'm going to be helping you guys, I'm going to be teaching you guys uh, how to play this game fundamentally. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I can go into, but it'll take me a very long time. And uh, eventually, it's going to be uh, a two-hour video because there's a lot of things to talk about. But I'm just going to go over the basics and the fundamentals of this game and how to play it. Uh, so if you are, let's say, planning to do a collab with a friend, at least you guys won't look uh, like total noobs if that is the plan. So we're just going to go ahead and hop into a game. Now, very, very first thing you got to know, there are difficulties. So that we have amateur, intermediate, professional and nightmare. Amateur is basically for new players. So I recommend you play this uh, if you are just starting up. So long setup time what does a long setup time mean so when you go into amateur you have five minutes where your sanity will not drop and where the ghost cannot hunt you uh, so basically you have five minutes where there, nothing bad can happen to you except cursed hunts so that is another thing that i want to talk about later but yes long hunt grace period grace period is basically uh the time it takes for the ghost to start moving uh, when it starts a hunt. So let's say uh, you're an amateur. The I think the hunt grace period is five seconds. So you have five seconds to get away from the ghost uh, before it can start to chase you and kill you. However, I think if you do get too near to the ghost, you can die either way. Hunt duration. So basically on amateur, uh, the time it takes for the ghost to finish a hunt is a lot shorter. And also do keep in mind that hunt durations are in fact map size related so the smaller the map the smaller the hunt duration the bigger the map the bigger the hunt duration sanity pills restore a lot of sanity sanity pills is one of the equipment that you can get that you can buy basically you lose sanity when you are in a room that is dark or if you uh, experience a lot of ghost events or if you get hunted or if you use a cursed object again i will talk about that later uh, you regain half your lost equipment value if you die. So let's say you buy a bunch of equipment and you die. Uh, if you're on amateur, you regain half of the money. There's something called insurance. So basically, if you take a picture of a dead body, I don't know if this is still a thing, but if you take a picture of a dead body and amateur, you get uh, your insurance back. Basically, you get some of your money back. Now, intermediate, everything basically gets shorter. Your setup time is three minutes, I believe. Uh, you have an average hunt grace period of, uh, I think it's three seconds, three seconds or, or something like that. Uh, and a hunt duration basically is longer now. Sanity pills will restore less of your sanity. And the fuse box starts off. Fuse box basically powers the entire house. You have fewer places to hide. Again, I will touch on that later. Uh, and you'll regain only a little bit of your value uh, of your money if you die, if you buy equipment. Professional is where uh, things are a lot uh, more difficult. So the ghost rooms can rarely change. Basically, in uh, in professional, your ghost room, the ghost, the basically the room where the ghost is, where you get all your evidence, can change. There is a chance for it to change. No setup time. That means the moment you start the map, the moment you shut the game, the ghost can kill you. The ghost will start moving around. Uh, you are not safe. Hunt grace period is at one second, I believe, or 1.5 on professional. Uh, hunt durations are longer. Sanity pills only restore 25% sanity, if I'm not mistaken. The fuse box again starts off, so you have to find the fuse box to turn on all the lights in the in the in the map. 
uh, much fewer hiding places basically a lot less places that you can hide and then there's nightmare uh, which is basically a challenge for people who are very experienced at the game basically the ghost will only hide uh, will hide one type of evidence so you usually you'll only get you always get three evidence if you play on nightmare you will only get one evidence uh two evidences so the third evidence you cannot get unless you are playing with a mimic uh which i will get into all the ghost types later and uh the ghost rooms will more often change so by the way one type of evidence you will need to know the mechanics of each ghost to be able to find out what ghost it is that's why it's for very experienced players um no setup time short hunt grace period it's only at one second you only have one second to start running before the ghost can start moving and kill you during a hunt hunt durations are extra longer each kill on nightmare if you are playing co-op with a uh, if you're playing co-op with a friend if your friend dies the hunt continues the hunt does not end if your friend dies which is usually what happens on other difficulties Sanity pills only restore 20% sanity, uh, and there are almost no hiding places, and of course the fuse box starts off. So I'm going to be playing on professional, just so you guys can get a much bigger feel, because on amateur, the chances of you getting very active ghosts or crazy ghost events are a lot, uh, are a lot less often, because it's on amateur, you know, they're, they're kind of playing it easy. Right, so we're going to go with Tanglewood, they are in fact, uh, what's it? 10 maps yes there are 10 maps currently in the game we have road houses and street houses so we have medium small medium and large maps so the small maps are basically tanglewood ridgeview willow edgefield uh grafton and bleasdale these are what i call small maps medium maps are your prisons and your campsites and your big maps are your high school and asylum so i recommend if you are just starting out if you're just starting out playing this game, I recommend that you play on the smaller maps. It's make it a lot, a lot easier for you. So we're going to go to Tanglewood. Tanglewood is by far, I feel like, the smallest and easiest map to play. Uh, it is a great map to play for amateurs. If you're just starting out, if you want to get a feel of the game, I recommend playing on uh, Tanglewood. Right, so we are going to go ahead and go into tanglewood so again this over here you can buy all your equipment uh each equipment has uh, a certain amount of money that you need to buy them with there's some equipments that you don't really need some equipments that are crucial i'm going to go over that when we start the game hmm. so hopefully all of this uh that i'm about to tell you in this video can help you guys basically get a more rough understanding of how to play the game so uh it'll make i guess it'll make the experience a lot more enjoyable because uh, if you go into the game and you keep dying, you know, it's not going to be very, very fun because you won't be able to uh, play the actual game and get all the objectives. Right, so here we are. So here we are. Let me give you a little run through. Basically, you have four objectives that you have to complete. You have four objectives that you have to complete. You have to discover what the ghost type is. And then the other three objectives are all... Yes, yes. Cursed object. Yes, yes. So, the other three object objectives, two to four, are basically randomized. You can get many different uh, objectives in Phasmophobia, from capturing a photo of the ghost, which we have here. Have a member of your team escape the ghost during a hunt. Basically, what that means is have the ghost see you, you hear the heartbeat, and then you're able to live through the hunt and prevent the ghost from hunting with a crucifix. So, we also always have a name, Josephine Taylor. So if you use your voice in game, uh, you will be able to uh, anger the ghost. It'll get more angry. Um, the Easter eggs right now, it's currently the Easter event. Uh, it is not very important because it ends in a couple of days. Right, so let's go ahead and run through the equipment now. I always recommend getting this flashlight. This is the strong flashlight as you can see it is a lot brighter than if you use this shitty flashlight which barely gives you any light and it's yellow and it's very ugly so you don't ever really need that strong flashlight is a black one here uh you have video camera now this will help you get the ghost orb objective so if you right click it you can get night vision 
I uh, right click the ghost, you get night visions, you can get ghost orbs with this. Now, ghost orbs will only spawn in the ghost room. So keep that in mind. The moment you see ghost orbs, that means that the ghost is in that room. Uh, you have the EMF. Basically, if something is thrown or there's an interaction, a door is touched, a light switch is touched, uh, it will give off an EMF. Now, you can get an EMF 5 reading, which is an evidence, as you can see over here, EMF 5. Uh, which only some ghosts have. So each ghost has three evidences. You have the spirit box. So if you talk into the spirit box and ask it a question like, where are you? Or how old are you? Or are you friendly? It'll respond and that will give you the spirit box evidence. Now the spirit box can only be used uh, near the ghost if the ghost has that evidence. If it does not or if you are too far away, uh, it will not respond to you so it is best to find the ghost room and then use this in the ghost room uh, this is the ghost writing book again another evidence uh, if the ghost writes in the book you will know that it is ghost writing which will limit the number of ghosts that are available you also have the dots projector now these things are pretty pretty wild uh, i will show you it later and explain to you later uv light this is how you find fingerprints uh, on doors or on light switches or on windows um, and stuff like that so when you hear a knock on the window i suggest you quickly grab a uv light or an emf now i'll explain the emf a, a bit more later but yes this will really help you find the fingerprint photos um, we also have glow stick now this is just basically a brighter version of the uv light However, the glow stick does kind of get dimmer uh, over time. So I just recommend using the UV light. Like this is very optional. You don't have to buy this. Uh, motion sensors. Now this will track if the ghost walks past this motion sensor. Uh, it is not, I would say if you're just starting out and you don't have money, there's really no need to buy this. Uh, but sometimes you do get that as an objective, which is capture the ghost with a motion sensor. Uh, right, we have a sound sensor, which is new and improved. Basically, if you place this down in the house, it will uh, basically have a circle around your map, and it'll show you over here on the sound sensor area uh, where a sound is being captured. So if you hear something being thrown and you're not in the house, uh, it'll pick it up on the sound sensor. Now, these are salt. Basically, these will help you get footprints. Uh, which you can take photos of, which will give you uh, extra money. And um, there's certain uh, there's certain mechanics that I'll talk about later. Uh, we have crucifixes. Basically, if you place this in the vicinity of the ghost, in the ghost room, uh, mostly you'll place this in the ghost room. Uh, if it hunts, if it triggers a hunt, this will prevent it. You only have two preventions though so after this crucifix is eaten up hopefully we can show that to you later uh you are in danger of being hunted uh, these are smudge sticks these are probably one of the most important but most difficult thing to use for amateur players a smudge stick can do many many things so um if you if you light a smudge stick while a ghost is hunting and chasing you and the ghost is near you, you will actually, you cannot get killed. It's basically a safe measure for a little bit. It will allow you to be run to a safe hiding spot, uh, usually away from where the ghost was coming from, and, uh, and, and hide. It also will anger ghosts if you smudge it in the ghost room. And what that means is it'll give you more interactions and more uh, activity. So these are very, very important candles are used to prevent your sanity from draining. So if you are in a big map, let's say, and you don't want your sanity to drain, because like I said earlier, uh, if you are in a dark room with no lights, your sanity will drain. So um, this will prevent drainage from that. However, if you get a ghost event, you will still lose sanity. So keep that in mind. Uh, sanity pills, again, if you are low on sanity, uh, you should, uh, you take the pills and your sanity will be restored, not completely, according to the difficulty. It'll be restored a certain percentage. We have thermometers. This is kind of a 50-50 on importance. So this I would use in small maps. So let's say you are in a small map. This 
If you're in a room, you point it at the floor and it'll show you the temperature of the room. If it is cold, usually less than 5 degrees, depending on the weather, depending on the weather. And if the breaker is on, which is why on small maps, you always want to turn off the breaker, which is this little battery icon on your map. You want to make sure that your, uh, you want to make sure that the ghost, the room that you are in is, I think, three degrees or less. That'll be a guaranteed ghost room. So keep a lookout for that. That is an easy way to find the ghost room. The parabolic microphone is one of the most controversial items in the game. Because it is both useless and useful at the same time. I usually don't use this. I think it's very redundant. Uh, if you are just starting out, avoid buying this first. Uh, I would recommend buying other equipment first. So, um, If you are just starting out, you will get all these items for free. Uh, only one of them though. Only one of them. Uh, starter items. If you want to buy other items, I recommend buying the smudge stick. I think that is the most important. Uh, smudge sticks. I recommend you buy uh, items that can that can appear as objectives that you need. So things like the motion sensor, the salt, and the crucifix. I think those are the things that you should prioritize when you are buying these uh, items in the store. Photo camera. Now, this I would say is one of the most important things in the game. This, if you want to get money to buy equipment, this is what you're gonna need. Now, a lot of people play this game, and this has happened to me before in collabs. A lot of people play this game and they don't fill up the photo book. Filling up the photo book with pictures will give you so much more money. It'll give you so much more money. Now, the photo has a system. The photo book has a system of different types of photos that you can take. And um, I will give you uh, a, a quick rundown later uh, as we go along. So, first, what I usually take when I start a mission. I take the strong flashlight. I take an EMF. And then I take a photo camera. So, let's just quickly go into the game. And I will give you the rundown. So, the first thing you want to do is turn on the breaker because you can turn on lights which will prevent your sanity from draining so we are going to go ahead and go into the garage because that is where we saw the icon in the truck now an important thing when you are starting off uh, each each map that you play is you have to check for hiding spots now there are multiple hiding spots in each map the uh, number of hiding spots that are available vary from difficulty, as you saw earlier. So let's say you're on amateur difficulty. There are a bunch of hiding spots here in Tanglewood. So you, you can hide in a bunch of areas in, tang uh, in, in maps. You can hide in closets like these. As you can see, you can hide in closets like these. And you can also hide in lockers, which uh, is right over here. Right over here, as you can see, locker. Right? It's it's blocked now because this is professional. So there are a lot less hiding spots. But yes, an amateur, these should be open. If you hide in them and close the door, you should be fine. Um, very important thing to note. When you are in a locker or a closet, I highly recommend that you... Um, I highly recommend that you close the door and hold it. So basically, use your mouse, grab it, close it, and hold it tight. Uh, that way, the ghost has less chance to kill you, uh, even though it still can, just so you know. So, I will talk about hunts a little later. Let's play the game first. So, the first thing I like to do is find the bone. So, this is a bone, right? Obviously. So you can find different types of bones. It can be any body part. You can, you can find a spine at any random area of the map. So you have to find it. So take a picture of it. And then you want to collect it. And it will give you extra money. And like I said, you want to fill up your photo book with, a, uh, with as many pictures as you can. Now... There are some things that can only be taken once. So the ghost photo, the bone photo can only be taken once. Uh, and the cursed object as well, which I will get into that a little later. So uh, what you want to do 
is you want to make sure you fill up the photo book. Now, interaction photos, uh, interaction photos will give you uh, money as well. So the perfect game to get a perfect photo game, you need the bone, you need the cursed object, you need a ghost photo, you need uh, a bunch of interactions or fingerprints. So that as long as you fill up the book, you should be fine. Right. So you must be wondering what is cursed objects. So cursed objects are uh, new features added to the game recently. So basically there are five cursed objects that can spawn in each of your Phasmophobia game. You have tarot cards, you have a music box, you have a uh, voodoo doll, you have a summoning circle, and you have a haunted mirror. Now these each has different usages to them. Uh, I'm going to hopefully try and get as many as I can. And for those that I can't find, uh, I will um, I will just explain it by myself. So you can also, oh, and also the Ouija board, yes. So, oh, did you see that? Okay, so it is in the basement. It is in the basement. The ghost is in the basement because, okay, if you see, you see this little smoke. This is your breath. And if you if you see this smoke, that means you are number one, you're in the ghost room. Number two, it means that there is freezing temperature evidence. If you use a thermometer, this should be negative degrees as well. Uh, however, uh, I wouldn't count too much on that because, again, it is affected by the weather. And so this is a summoning circle. I will explain this later when we get to use it. It's a, This is a very good way to take a ghost photo. Very, very good way to take a ghost photo safely. Right, so now that we know uh, where the ghost is, which is in this room, uh, we will go ahead. Let me turn on the brightness a little bit so that it's easier for you guys to see. Okay, so we are going to get more equipment to find out what ghost this is. So we're going to go ahead and get, usually what I like to get is I like to get a camera. I like to get a, uh, I like to get a UV light and I like to get a spirit box uh, off the bat if I found the ghost room. Because these are things that you don't want to miss. These are things that you don't want to miss. So we're going to take a camera. So you can put the camera on a tripod uh, by pressing F. Oh, as you can see. The lights aren't working, which means that the ghost uh, actually turned off the breaker. So, this is where you have to turn it back on. Okay, so, with the camera, like I said earlier, you can uh, find the ghost orb evidence. So, you place a camera in a place of the, of the ghost room where it can cover a lot of the area. And when you do that, and you turn off the light... Uh, you will be able to see orbs if they are the ghost orbs evidence. The spirit box. Now, the spirit box can only be used if the light is turned off. The spirit box can only be used if the light is turned off. So, if you turn off your light and you talk in it, are you here? Now, okay, this is a good example. So, you see the little black X that appears below, like right next to the numbers? Like, where are you? If that lights up, that means that the, the, the game is able to track your voice because the voice recognition in this game sometimes wonks out. So if I go, how old are you? Where are you? How old are you? You can see it starts to light up, right? It starts to light up. But if it doesn't, uh, that means the ghost is not, the, the game is not detecting your voice. A quick fix for that, just press the Windows keys twice. Usually that works for me all the time. Um, but yes, if you talk to it in the ghost room and it doesn't have a response, uh, usually it means that the ghost is not there. Uh, it can be because the ghost has roamed to another area. Um, but yes, if you, let's see, let's see you hear something being thrown in the room that you're in, the ghost room, right? Let's see you hear this. You're like, oh, okay. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna talk to the spirit box. If it does not respond, you can pretty much cross out spirit box in your uh in your book by uh clicking twice 
So this will eliminate a lot of the ghost types so that it will be easier for you. The UV light only works if the ghost touches a light switch, a door, or windows. So, okay, that is a ghost event. This is a ghost event. Right here, look at this. That is a ghost event. So that was two simultaneous ghost events. Now, ghost events will cause your lights to turn off. Now, don't be fooled. If a ghost event happens, right, and you hear, oh, like, I turned off the light, I'm going to check for fingerprints, and you see no fingerprints, that does not mean that there are no fingerprints. It does not mean that there are no fingerprints because ghost events will close doors and turn off lights, but they will not give fingerprints. So that is something you have to keep in mind of. So ghost events will lower your sanity a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and check our sanity and also bring extra equipment. So these are just some of the basic stuff you should know when you're coming into a game. There's so many things that I want to talk about, like uh, the different ghosts. I will give a run through of each different ghost later. Uh, but I do think that if you want to learn a lot more about uh, the game, then it'll take a lot more time. So as you can see, my average is 60% sanity now interesting very important thing to note most ghosts hunt you when you are below 50 percent sanity if you are anywhere above 50 percent sanity you will not get hunted however however if you got certain ghosts which i will explain later there are certain ghosts here basically uh the raiju Basically, the uh, demon, a banshee, and a uh, and the twins. These can hunt you at sixty percent sanity, with the yokai coming in at an eighty percent sanity, where it can hunt you. Uh, which I'll get into that later when I talk about the ghosts. I'm gonna drink some water. Don't mind me. Right. So. These are the all the evidence that you're gonna want to take in, or rather, all the equipments that you want to gonna have it, that you wanna have in your house, is the camera, this dots this little thing right here, the writing book, the spirit box, the EMF, and the UV light. These are really the the only things you need uh, in the house to gather evidence. So we're gonna just take these. So, the dots. I didn't explain this because I want to show it to you. I want to show it to you guys. So, basically, if you can see, these are what the dots look like. This is what the dots look like. So, if I place this right here, that is what the dots look like. So, what happens with these dots? What are these? Basically, apart from a Gorio. Uh, you will be able to see a small silhouette, a white silhouette of somebody running through these dots. Uh, it is a lot easier to see on the camera. Uh, if we have dots, I will be able to show you. But yeah, so you're wondering why I did this, right? I think this is something that I love telling people to do because it helps uh, so much with this uh, evidence. So I like to put the book aligned with the dots because if at any time a ghost interacts with the writing book if it touches it if it throws it if it is not a ghost with the ghost writing evidence it will not write in the book but it, if it is a ghost with the ghost writing evidence and it throws the book but you know and it'll always write in it it'll always write in it so sometimes it's hard let's say you just place it like here sometimes you forget sometimes it's a little hard to see if it's like thrown that is a ghost event very interesting so my sanity is pretty low right now right my sanity is pretty low right now so what you want to do take some sanity pills you want to keep the sanity above 50, that way you won't get hunted. You can see. But yes, 
So ghost events like that can happen. Now these you want to keep very close attention to because these will help you get the ghost photo. These will help you get the ghost photo. Right, anyways, yes. So my advice to you for the ghost writing book uh, and the dots is to place it this way where the kind of the, the spine of the book matches the, the little dot sensor. And that makes it a lot easier to see if it is a ghost writing book. So let's say you leave the house, you come back, right? Let's say you leave the house, you come back. If you don't, if you see that the book is in a different position, let's say here, or, or let's say like here, because it's been thrown, but you don't see any writing, you can pretty much cross that out of your book, of your journal, which will make it again, a lot easier to find the ghost. Right. So basically now what we want to do is we want to find out what ghost it is, or you can hold that off and instead look for evidence now you want to make sure you try to complete all the objectives because it would really help you it would really really help you get a lot more money which it's crucial for amateur players it is crucial for amateur players so as you can see you see the little you see the little moving dot that is a ghost orb that is a ghost orb so now we know that we have orbs in the in the as an evidence we know that we have orbs in an evidence. So if there are dots, you will be able to see something quickly run past. You'll be able to see something quickly run past here. And, uh, and it should be a lot. It, basically, you'll be able to know that it's an evidence. So if you don't see it for a long time, now usually how this works a secret mechanic that they don't tell you is that if the ghost is in the room, it'll force dots if it is one of their evidence in 15 seconds, within 15 seconds. Uh, so if in 15 seconds you don't see it, most likely you won't get a, a, a dots ghost. Oh, did you just see that? Okay, so if we count 15 seconds... We stay for 15 seconds and we don't see any dots. That means that it is not one of the evidence. So we can cross that out. So you can see we don't see any dot objectives. We're not seeing anything. Which means that it is not the evidence. So we are down to three ghosts just like that. This is why if you really know the game, you don't need to collect all the evidence to find out what ghost it is. So we also have freezing. By the way, so it's a revenant or a hantu. A revenant or a hantu. So we have fingerprints for hantu and revenant, and a ghost writing for uh, revenant. So we need to get these two objectives, right? We need to get these two objectives. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. Earlier, I told you about the cursed object, right? I told you about the cursed object. Uh, the we have a summoning circle. So what this summoning circle does is the summoning circle. Um, basically, it will summon the ghost where it'll be in an idle state and cannot kill you for about five seconds. And then it'll start to chase you and trigger a cursed hunt. Cursed hunts last a lot longer. So if you get a hunt from using a cursed object, the hunts last a lot longer. So you want to be very, very careful with that. Very, very careful with that. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, I'm just going to put one there because I don't want to die. It'll be pretty embarrassing. So again, smudge sticks, very important, especially for evidence where it says either escape a ghost during a hunt or if it says repel the ghost with a smudge stick during a hunt. So that these are those are very, very important. So... Basically, having the smudge stick will be able to help you complete those few objectives. Now, the smudge stick, again, I cannot stress how important it is. I cannot stress how important a smudge stick is. Right, okay. So, this is how it's going to look like. 
So what you want to do if you're going to use this, what you want to do is you want to find a hiding spot. And before we hide and before we start the hunt, one thing to keep very, very important note of is if you are holding, if you have any electronic equipment active in your inventory, that is a ghost event. You're very funny. That actually gave me chills. Right. So if you are, if you have a, um, if you have any electronic equipment in your inventory, you will, uh, get caught. You will get caught even if you're hiding. So let's say you go inside the locker or the closet and you close the door. Uh, if you drop your flashlight, it's fine. But if you have it in your inventory and you have it on, let's say you have it on, the ghost will find you. That is a new thing that they added a couple of months ago. So you want to make sure you press T to turn off your flashlight. You know, or and, and be careful because if you if you turn it off and you switch to your flashlight, it's still on. Apparently, this is some kind of weird bug uh, that they haven't fixed. <clears throat> so turn off all your equipment. Make sure you don't have anything in your hand. If you have a photo cam in your hand, again, it'll find you. Uh, if you have like an, an, an turned on EMF in your hand, it'll find you. So make sure just make sure you don't have any electronic equipments in your uh, holding hand or like turned on a turned on flashlight. Um, and yes, and you obviously want to keep extremely quiet. So I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, how this summoning circle works. Again, I told you this is a very, very good way to find the uh, to take a photo of the ghost. And this is why. That is why. So that will trigger a cursed hunt. So you want to keep extremely quiet. I do have push to talk on though. So you want to hold the door closed. As you can see, I'm holding the door closed. So that way, it, because when it passes by a door, there's a chance that it'll interact with the door. And if it opens your door while you're inside, you are basically screwed. It'll see you and it'll haunt you. Okay. So that right there signals the end of the hunt. If you want to be sure, if you can turn on any of the light switches, that means that the hunt is over. So the downside to using the summoning circle is that um, you lose a lot of sanity. Look at that. You lose a lot of sanity while you are doing the um, while you are doing the candles for the summoning circle. So we only really have one pill left. Uh, this is a good time after a hunt. It is a very very good time to try and find uh, fingerprints. To try and find fingerprints to take uh, to take photos of them, and that will help you. It will really help you see what type of ghost it is. So. Any door that it touches during a hunt has a chance, uh, will leave fingerprints, not has a chance, it will leave fingerprints. So if you don't see any fingerprints anywhere, chances are you are not dealing with a fingerprint ghost. Okay, so how to know if it's hunting. Also, we are dealing with a revenant, which is pretty, pretty terrifying, considering this is the first game. So, now I see there are no fingerprints, so we can cross that out, which leaves us with Revenant, which is not a very fun ghost to have. Now, I'm not going to fill up the photo book just because, you know, it's going to take me a long time. Uh, I'm going to show you the other objectives. Got to go ahead and show you the other objectives. We got to get it to hunt, though, uh, which will be pretty terrifying. But yes, so objectives, you can prevent the ghost from hunting or the crucifix. This is one of my least favorite objectives because 
is one of my least favorite objectives because um, basically it is very RNG because let's say you have a room and the ghost starts hunting at the front of the room but you put your crucifix uh, let me give you an example let's say the ghost starts hunting from uh, let's use this room let's say the ghost starts hunting from here right this area but you put your crucifix all the way there all the way here it is not going to work it is not going to work you're still going to get hunted without the crucifix being here so if you're in a large room you're going to have to constantly be changing the areas of the crucifix which is why i don't really like doing that now have a team member of uh escape the ghost during a hunt basically it's very simple you have to let the ghost see you and have the ghost chase you or at least you know have the ghost see you basically when you know the ghost see you there's a heartbeat that will be playing so once that happens and you manage to survive the hunt somehow let's say you run away and you manage to hide in time uh, you'll be able to complete the objective. If you have an objective that says repel the ghost with a smudge stick, have a lighter and a smudge stick in your inventory. If you see the ghost coming to you, if you are uh, close enough, when he gets close enough, you press F on your smudge stick, you can drop it, and then you can run away and hide, and the ghost will start wandering in a different direction than when you're going. Uh, it will start wandering uh, randomly, and it will not chase you. So that is, that is why I say that the smudge stick one of the most important defense items in the game, if not the only defense items in the game that's uh, very, very worthwhile to get. So, we have orbs, we have uh, no EMF, we have no fingerprints, uh, we have no dots, we have no spirit box, we have freezing ghost orbs. Even though you didn't get ghost writing, you can see that we already found out what the ghost is. So, we can leave. Again, fill up the... A book with as many photos as you can because it really does help it really really does help so the max amount of money you can get okay apparently I was wrong <laughs> apparently it didn't touch any of the doors which is very weird but yeah sometimes games like these happen where uh, you know you get things that don't seem like what they are so the more thorough you investigate the better it is Right, so the next, as you can see, the max amount of money you can get from a professional difficulty is $270. Uh, I think, I'm not sure what it is for amateur and intermediate because I don't really play it. Um, but yes, that is basically the basics of the game. Uh, a few things to remember. Always get, um, always fill up your book with photos. Uh... I would recommend having one designated person to take photos because if you take photo of an interaction twice, like the same interaction twice, it's not going to count. So you want to make sure you're close as well. You make sure you want to close enough to the photo that you're taking. So let's say the bone is on the floor. You want to squat down and take the photo of the bone instead of, uh, instead of just having it uh, taken standing up. Uh, you want to make sure that you... Um, find the bone find the cursed object uh i will explain that in the next video because it's been 43 minutes i'll explain cursed objects uh in the next video hopefully we'll be able to uh work on uh to find all the cursed objects and um video camera uh i would recommend getting at least two photo camera you always want to buy so as you can see this right here the equipment list this is the things that they give you for free but you can buy more uh, i suggest buying again uh important things i suggest buying the lighter the smudge sticks at least have at least two photo cameras at least two sanity pills strong flashlight and tripod that is what i recommend you buy when you are just starting out everything else kind of don't need to except the crucifix you know crucifix motion sensor and salt those three are more optional but if you want to get more money fast uh, you might want to invest in those uh, so yes that is it basically the fundamentals of the game uh, i hope this has helped you i'm sorry if i missed anything this is the first time that i'm doing something like this 
in the next video that I'm going to upload very quickly after this one goes up. Uh, I will be talking about cursed objects and each different ghost type and their abilities to get you a rougher understanding of how uh, the ghosts work. So with that said, thank you all for watching and I will see you guys soon. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Again, make sure you guys check out twitch.tv slash divinityvt at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. GMT plus 8. If you want to join us for some fun, chaotic streams, I play a lot of Phasmo. I sometimes play Apex and Valorant as well. All the links for my socials will be in the description, right? Take care, everybody. Jana, bye-bye.